friends now we will be starting the new topic called non parametric methods now if you remember my terminology in the previous lectures uh, for example when we were discussing parametric methods we always started with the statement like saying let x1 x2 xn be a random sample from a probability from a population with probability distribution and we called it p theta that means we knew that the distribution is of the form of a normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma square a poisson distribution with parameter lambda with binomial distribution with parameters n and p or a gamma distribution with parameters say r and lambda pareto distribution v bull distribution so these are all called parametric models because basically what we are saying is that we are able to pinpoint the probability model for our phenomena or the population under study uh, but uh, and therefore the methods that were uh, derived they were specific to that for example uh, unbiased estimation minimum variance and bias estimation we had the concept of uh, mean squared error of the estimators we had the concept of uh, uh, admissible minimax estimators we had the also the uh, testing problems in which we uh, considered a parametric model say normal distribution so we are testing whether the mean is equal to 0 or the mean is equal to 1 or the mean is theta is less than or equal to theta naught or theta greater than theta naught etc so all the procedures that were developed were under the assumption that we are having certain distribution for our population under study but many times it happens that either the data is insufficient for uh, fitting of a distribution or it is too volatile to actually fit a distribution in that case we may need the methods which are uh, uh, under the assumption that only we make some general assumptions like a continuous distribution etc and a specific form is not assumed so such methods they are called distribution free methods or the methods of non parametric statistics so distribution free so basically what happens that whatever method we uh, derive uh, they will be free from the distributional assumptional model that means uh, distributional model assumptions for example we will not say that it is a normal distribution or it is a poisson distribution or it is a binomial distribution etc uh, in order uh, these methods are also quite old after uh, right after the uh, fisherian area era that means 1930s uh, and neman pearson theory uh, abraham wald came and through his efforts mainly the non parametric methods wald wolfowitz etc they started developing and especially there was a treatise by wald on the non parametric methods so these methods are quite old and in 1960s by hajek and uh, there are other people who developed these methods hoefding so we will be coming across and then also uh, kalmogorov smirno they developed a powerful method which was also free from the distributional assumption so because of that this methods have gained popularity now with the advent of uh, uh, computer oriented procedures these methods are easy to apply uh, one thing one can uh, understand that since we are having less assumption about the model of the population the in general the methods will be slightly less powerful than the methods when we have the information on the type of the distribution but that is expected because if we have uh, more information assumed then your uh, method should be more powerful uh, the primary building block of uh, non parametric methods is the following result that is called probability integral transform uh, briefly i mentioned about this thing in my <coughs> distribution theory that means when we were discussing the distribution of a function of random variable so this particular result is actually a building block of uh, the methods which are developed for the uh, non parametric statistics so i will state the following result if x is a continuous random variable with some cdf say f of x let us define uh, y is equal to f x of x that means in place of this small x i replace by capital x so this becomes a function of the random variable because 
<coughs> see it is like this uh, let me take an example suppose i am considering say x following exponential distribution with parameter lambda then what is your capital f x that is 1 minus e to the power minus lambda x for x greater than or equal to 0 it is equal to 0 for x less than 0. In this if I define y is equal to f x then that is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus lambda x basically for x greater than or equal to 0 which is true of course, because x is a positive random variable. So, this will be this function basically. <coughs> so, then if I look at the distribution of that then y has a uniform distribution on the interval 0 to 1. Now, this is a very strong or you can say powerful result, but because what it says that from any distribution I can achieve at least in the continuous case I can go to the uniform distribution and together with this we will give inverse of this it becomes a very powerful tool for the simulation. Let me look at the proof of this. Let, uh, let us define say u is equal to supremum of x such that f x is equal to f x x is equal to y for 0 less than y less than 1. So, if I consider f of x is equal to y less than or equal to y, then this is equivalent to saying that x is less than or equal to u. So, if I consider say f y y that is equal to probability of y less than or equal to y that is same as probability of x less than or equal to u that is equal to f x of u, f x of u is nothing but y. So, what we are getting that if I am considering a y a point between 0 to 1 then capital Y less than or equal to y is equivalent to x less than or equal to u, because u is the supremum of this set of values for which f x is equal to y. So, probability of y less than or equal to y is same as probability of x less than or equal to u. So, that is f x u and that is equal to y. So, we have proved that for y between 0 to 1 f y is equal to y and of course, if I consider say y to be less than or equal to 0 certainly f of y will be 0. Why? Because f is a C D f, f is a C D f. So, C D f takes values between 0 to 1 and for y greater than or equal to 1 f y y that will be equal to 1. So, these two statements are valid because f is a C D f all the values of y f y are between 0 to 1 only. So, what we have proved? So, we have proved that f y let me write it thus we have shown that f y is equal to 0 for y less than or equal to 0, it is equal to y for 0 less than y less than 1, it is equal to for y greater than or equal to 1, which is C D F of a uniform 0 1 random variable. So, we have proved that if x is a continuous random variable with C D F f x then y has a that means f x in place of a small x i replace by capital X. So, it becomes a function. So, this random variable will have a uniform distribution. So, that means if I have a random sample if x 1 x 2 x n is a random sample. from a continuous distribution with C D f say capital F then f of x 1, f of x 2, f of x n is a random sample 
from uniform 0 1. So, this is a very powerful result and in fact, uh, many of the methodologies of uh, non parametric uh, statistics will be based on this result. Uh, of course, we are interested in the whether the converse of this result is also true that we consider inverse probability integral transform. So, let us look at say y following uniform 0 1 and let f be c d f of a. So, basically we assume it to be a absolutely continuous let f be absolutely continuous c d f ok. Then define say x is equal to f inverse y. Let us look at, so how do you define inverse? f inverse of a function is defined as infimum of the set of all x's for which y is less than or equal to f x. So, if I consider probability of f inverse y less than or equal to say x that is probability of x less than or equal to x. So, that is equal to probability of y less than or equal to f x, but what is this thing y is uniform 0 1. So, this has to be simply f f x. So, what we are saying c d f of capital x is f x. So, what we are proving is that that if y has this so, let me write this result here in the form of a theorem. Proved that if f is an absolutely continuous CDF and y is uniform 0 1, then f inverse y has C D F capital F. These two results taken together are also the you can say uh, building blocks of the simulation procedures, because in simulation we have to generate random samples from some given distribution with C D F capital F. So, what we do uh, the procedures have been developed to generate pseudo random numbers basically that is the uniformly distributed numbers on uh, from 1 to some upper bound which is uh, defined by the upper limit of the largest integer in a uh, computer program. What we do we divide by that upper bound. So, you get uniformly distributed random numbers between 0 to 1. Now, f is the known distribution then you can consider f inverse of that. Then we will get the random sample from that particular distribution. Let us consider say this uh, example of exponential distribution. So, if we consider, so uh, let me consider this as an example. If say u 1, u 2, u n is a random sample from uniform 0 1 then 1 minus e to the power minus lambda. So, you calculate the inverse of this actually if I write the y is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus lambda x this is f. So, 1 minus y is equal to e to the power minus lambda x. So, minus lambda x is equal to log of 1 minus y. So, x is equal to minus 1 by lambda log of 1 minus y. So, this is the inverse of this. So, then if I consider the random variables x 1, x 2, x n where x i is equal to 1 by lambda log of 1 minus y i, then this has 
uniform uh, sorry exponential lambda distribution. So, this method helps us to generate random samples from various distributions at least for them for which this f inverse in a closed form. If f inverse is not in a closed form, then of course, uh, the method becomes difficult. For example, if we look at the normal distribution, but then we look at some other transformations because uh, many distributions are related to each other and uh, for example, normal distribution can be generated through some other transformation. So, there are methods which are available for that. <coughs> Maybe in uh, one of the classes, I will uh, briefly touch upon the uh, simulation part also. Now, let us uh, the next building blocks of the uh, non parametric methods they are called order statistics. Uh, this order statistics also I discussed uh, earlier in distribution theory. As you know that if I consider let x 1, x 2, x n be a random sample, we define x 1 to be the smallest of x 1, x 2, x n. Then x 2 we define to be the second smallest of x 1, x 2, x n. And in a similar way x r is the rth smallest of x 1, x 2, x n and so on and finally, x n is the largest of x 1, x 2, x n. Then we call this x 1, x 2, x n as the the order statistics of x 1, x 2, x n. Uh, if we assume that uh, random variables are continuous, then the probability of uh, any of the x 1 being x 2 being equal will be 0. In that case, we can study the distribution theory or the properties of the distribution of this. Uh, let me firstly consider the joint distribution of x 1, x 2, x n. If you remember in the part when I was discussing the distribution theory and we discussed the distribution the joint distribution of the functions of random variable, we have considered this distribution. So, that means, if I consider say let, let me consider the general case the joint distribution of order statistics. Uh, before going to the derivation, let me also talk about the use of this order statistics from a practical point of view, because uh, I am giving this course for the scientists and engineers who are who may not be knowing uh, exactly the statisticians, they may be simply using these methods. So, what is the use of this? So, many a times it happens that we are not interested in observations as they are given to us or as they arise. Rather, we may be interested in a particular form of that or you can say ordering of that. Let us look at some very straightforward examples. Suppose, there is a testing of the strength of a certain material or certain brand of a certain instrument or something like that. If we are considering certain brand of a certain instrument, then we may like to use that one which has the largest lifetime. So, suppose the lifetimes have been recorded, then I am not interested in each of them rather I am interested only in the largest one. In a similar way, suppose there is a selection of the best candidate, then I may be interested in say for example, I have two positions. So, out of uh, 10 candidates who appeared, the scores are given for those 10 people, I may, I may be looking at x 9 with a bracket and x 10. Rather than looking at all of them, I may be interested only in the 
best 2 that is the largest 2. Similarly, in some other cases I may be interested in the minimum for example, an item with the lowest price or the 3 items with the lowest price in a set of say 10 items. So, if you consider for example, certain sports events say uh, gymnastics or uh, say uh, figure skating and so on where scores are given by the judges. Then we look at the total scores and then we look at we rank them according to the largest to the lowest and then the top 2, top 4 or like that top 3 they are considered actually. That means, this order statistics are always indirectly playing role in the real life. In whatever physical application we are actually making use of them. Therefore, in non-parametric methods when we are having the parametric methods then certainly uh, we go by the averages and so on. So, the distribution theory is nice, but when we have uh, we do not have too much knowledge about the form of the distribution then we use the order statistics. So, uh, so, uh, so studying the distributions of the order statistics is one of the primer you can say of primary concern in the non-parametric method. So, the joint distribution of order statistics uh, let us consider x 1, x 2, x n. Uh, we use the notation say uh, let x 1, x 2, x n be a random sample from a continuous distribution. Okay. So, f so, this is a random sample that means, I am at this stage assuming them to be independent and identically distributed and uh, p d f then let us assume say small f. And uh, we use this notation for brevity. We want the joint distribution of y 1, y 2, y n. Okay. <coughs> We know that in order to obtain this, we have to firstly write down the joint PDF of x1, x2, xn, and then we apply the transformation. The joint distribution or the joint PDF of x1, x2, xn. So, that is simply written as product of fxi i is equal to 1 to n. Okay we can also write it as f of x, where x is uh, this vector and uh, small x is x 1, x 2, x n. Now, this transformation, when we make this transformation y i is equal to x i, we have to write down the inverse transformation and the Jacobian. So, there are n factorial inverse images of this transformation. For example, you may have x 1 less than x 2 less than x n, you may have x 2 less than x 1 less than x 3 less than x n and so on. You may have x n less than x n minus 1 less than x 1. So, if we call these regions as say a 1 that is x such that this happens a 2 is x such that this is true and so on a n factorial x such that this happens. Let us consider the Jacobian in one case. So, the inverse transformation in the first region, the inverse image is x 1 is equal to y 1, x 2 is equal to y 2, x n is equal to y n. So, Jacobian of the transformation that is del x 1 by del y 1 that is 1, del x 1 by del y 2 is 0 and so on, del x 2 by del y 1 0, del x 2 by y 2, del y 2 0 1 and so on. 
which is nothing but a determinant of the identity matrix that is equal to 1. Now, what happens in the second region say for example, A 2. <coughs> in A 2, the inverse image if you write then you will have x 1 is equal to y 2, x 2 is equal to y 1, x 3 is equal to y 3 and so on x n is equal to y n. So, if we consider the Jacobian del x 1 by del y 1 is 0, del x 1 by del y 2 is 1 and then there are zeros. Here del x 2 by del y 1 is 1, this is equal to 0, 0. 0 0 0 1 which is nothing but determinant of the identity matrix with the first and second rows interchanged other rows are the same or you can say first and second columns interchanged. So, this value will be equal to minus 1. Subsequently, if we consider other transformations for example, if you look at this one here it is totally reversed. So, it is also obtained. So, it will become 0 0 0 1. So, it will become simply all the uh, rows and columns are changed here like this is going to the last one, this is going to the second last, this is going to the first one. So, if that is happening then the determinant will be simply minus 1 to the power n because n transformations in the initial one will be there. So, if you look at the determinant they are either plus 1 or minus 1 in every case. So, if I consider the absolute value it is going to be plus 1. So, in all cases the absolute value of the determinant or the Jacobian is going to be plus 1. Now, look at the density the density in every region is nothing but. So, here it is interesting you look at this one here all the terms are coming f x 1, f x 2, f x n. When you consider the inverse transformation in the first region it is f y 1, f y 2, f y n. In the second one it will be f y 2, f y 1, f y n. In the last region it will become f y n, f y 2, f f y n minus 1, f y 1. That means, all the time the n terms are coming, but they may be in any order ultimately it is the product. So, what you are getting product of f of y i i is equal to 1 to n and you have to sum up all these things n factorial times. Since, there are n factorial regions the p d f of y 1, y 2, y n is n factorial times product of f of y i, i is equal to 1 to n. At the same time, you have y 1 less than y 2 less than y n. In beginning, I have not assumed any interval then it will be from minus infinity to infinity. If there is a sub interval for example, if it is a uniform distribution on the interval 0 to 1 then this will be 0 to 1. If it is some a to b then it will be like that if it is say 0 to infinity then this will come, come 0 to upper limit infinity. So, like that there, there can be any regions here. So, this is the joint probability density of the order statistics. Uh, once we have the joint density, we can derive the density of the uh, particular choices. For example, if I want the density of second one, if I want the density of the third one, if I want the density of the largest, if you want the density of the smallest etcetera. We will have to evaluate the integral with respect to other variables. For example, if I want for y 1 then up to y 2 to y n I have to integrate, if I want for y 2 then y 1, y 3 and so on I have to integrate which can be done I will show you a systematic method for this can be obtained. However, 
the case of the smallest and the largest can be done directly also, uh, because that is much more straightforward based on the representation. So, let me show you that thing separately and then we look at the distribution of the some middle one that is uh, rth order status say where r can be 2, 3 and so on. So, let us consider say distribution of minimum that is x 1, it is the minimum of x 1, x 2, x n. Let us consider say uh, probability of say x 1 greater than some value say y 1, then it is equal to probability of x 1 greater than y and so on x n greater than y 1. Because if the minimum is greater than y 1, then each of x 1, x 2, x n has to be greater than y 1. At the same time, if each of x 1, x 2, x n is greater than y 1, then the minimum has to be greater than y 1. So, this event and this event they are equivalent. Now, this x 1, x 2, x n are independently distributed. So, this can be written as the product of probabilities x i greater than y 1 for i is equal to 1 to n. Now, each of x i is having the same C D of capital F. So, this is nothing but 1 minus f of y 1 whole to the power n. So, what we have obtained? If we consider the C D F of x 1, then it is equal to 1 minus 1 minus f of y 1 to the power n. So, this is a general expression for the cumulative distribution function of the smallest order statistics and here you can easily see that I have not made any other assumption other than the form of the CDF as taking to be capital F. There is no other assumption. I am simply taking x 1, x 2, x n to be a random sample. Therefore, they are having the same distribution F and they are independent. So, this joint probability becomes equal to the product of individual probabilities. Since x 1, x 2, x n they are uh, continuous, so capital F is absolutely continuous function. Therefore, it is differentiable almost everywhere and I can consider the p d f of since f is absolutely continuous, we have the p d f of x 1 as. So, if you differentiate with n times 1 minus f of y 1 to the power n minus 1, then derivative of this that is a small f of y 1. So, we are able to derive the distribution of the smallest. Similarly, you can consider the distribution of the largest. that is x n that is equal to maximum of x 1, x 2, x n. So, here let us consider again f of f x n of y n that is the probability of x n less than or equal to say y n. Once again we utilize the definition of the order statistics. We are saying that the maximum is less than or equal to y n. This is exactly equivalent to probability of x 1 less than or equal to y n and so on x n less than or equal to y n. Because if the maximum is less than or equal to y n, then individually each of x 1, x 2, x n will be less than or equal to y n. At the same time, if each of x 1, x 2, x n is less than or equal to y n, then the maximum is also going to be less than or equal to y n. 
Once again, as I applied the argument of independent and identically distributed random variables, we can have this is equal to product of probability of x i less than or equal to y n, i is equal to 1 to n and each of x i has the same C D F f. So, this is simply becoming f of y n to the power n. So, this is very interesting the C D F of the largest is nothing but obtained from the original C D F by taking power n. So, this is very very interesting in the minimum case it was becoming 1 minus to the power n and then 1 minus of that and here it is straightforward the same thing just raised to the power n. Now, once again if uh, capital F is the absolutely continuous function because f is a continuous random uh, x is a continuous random variable that means, these random variables came from a continuous population. Therefore, it is differentiable almost everywhere and the p d f so, the p d f of x n is obtained by derivative of this. So, it will become n times f of y n to the power n minus 1 and then the derivative of this. So, I have been able to successfully obtain the distribution of the minimum and the maximum of the observations in a random sample. Uh, so, as I mentioned to you the typical applications are in selections when we want to choose the uh, cheapest item, we want to have the item with the maximum longevity and so on. So, in almost all uh, physical applications in economics, in industry, uh, in uh, social sciences etcetera everywhere we are having this thing holding here. So, uh, uh, that means, we can actually derive the uh, distribution of the minimum and maximum and we can utilize that. So, I mean it, uh, you can think in this particular fashion for example, I have found the maximum now I am once we have selected that thing then we will be really using that again and again. So, what is the distribution of that for example, if it is life what is the average life or what is the variability of the life for example, if it is the cost. So, I have chosen the one item with the least cost then how that least cost is varying over time. So, all these things are of real interest in the uh, for scientists and engineers in various disciplines including uh, people working in economics or sociology uh, where we are uh, ranking the people according to some other kind of uh, features uh, ranking of the items, ranking of the instruments and so on. Uh, then uh, a more general thing would be that rather than looking at only the minimum and maximum we may be looking at any particular position. So, once again why that is of importance for example, in the usual uh, parametric methods we generally consider the mean of the observations. So, mean of the observations is uh, coming out we are able to obtain the distribution in most of the cases, but when we are considering the form of the distribution not known then studying the distribution of the mean becomes very difficult except in the cases that where we assume that form and then we consider large sample theory. So, we can consider central limit theorem. Uh, but then again there are drawbacks of using the sample mean in sense of having less robustness in the sense that uh, if there are wild fluctuations there are extreme observations then the sample mean is more affected. Then one may be interested in the median, median of the observations. So, median means suppose I am having odd number of observations then it is the middle if I am considering even number of observations in then it is uh, between the middle 2 or you can take the average of the middle 2 that means, in place of the largest or the smallest I may be interested in the distribution of some other order statistics that means, I may be interested in x 3, x 4 for example, I may be looking at a particular position. So, for example, I may be interested in say 1 by 4th or I may be interested in 3 by 4th 
that may be our cutoff. So, what are the distributions of this point? What is the distribution of this point? And so on. So, in general, we want the distribution of the rth order statistics. So, let us discuss that thing. So, next we consider the distribution of the rth order statistic x r. So, where of course, your r is between 1 and n. If we go by our usual theory, then what we have to do? We have actually obtained the joint distribution of x 1, x 2, x n. So, y 1, y 2, y n I use this notation, they are the order statistics. From here, I integrate the all the variables except the y r here. So, we have to develop a algorithm for that. Let us consider the joint distribution we call it y r. So, the joint distribution of y 1, y 2, y n that we wrote n factorial times product of f y i i is equal to 1 to n, where now I write this region in a more elaborate way minus infinity less than y 1 less than y 2 less than so on y r minus 1 less than y r less than y r plus 1 less than and so on y n less than infinity. So, here except y r I have to integrate all others. So, we can consider like this the marginal p d f of y r that is equal to x r is obtained by integrating f y with respect to y 1, y 2, y r minus 1, y r plus 1 and so on y n as below. that is f of y r that is equal to n factorial times ok. Let me write it here. If we integrate with respect to y 1 then it will be from minus infinity to y 2 if we integrate then y 2 then it will be from minus infinity to y 3 and so on up to y r minus 1 this will be integrated from minus infinity to y r minus infinity to y r. <coughs> so, this is n factorial product of f of y i i is equal to 1 to n d y 1 d y 2 d y r minus 1. Now, then let us look at integration of y n, y n will be integrated from y n minus 1 to infinity. So, this will be from y n minus 1 to infinity, then next one will be y n minus 1, then it will be from y n minus 2 to infinity and so on. Then ultimately y r plus 1 will be from y r to infinity. Okay? So, this is d y n d y n minus 1 and up, so up to d y r plus 1. Now, let us look at the integration part here. Uh, first one is integration of f y 1. So, if we integrate f y 1 we will get capital f y 1 and we integrate from minus infinity to y 2. At y 2 this will become simply y 2 and this will become f of y 2 minus f of minus infinity that is 0. So, it will be simply f of y 2. At the next stage then I have when I am integrating with respect to y 2 then I have to integrate f of y 2 into small of f of y 2. 
the integral of this will give me 1 by 2 f square y 2 from minus infinity to y 3. So, this is simply becoming 1 by 2 f square y 3. So, at the third stage then I have 1 by 2 f square y 3 f of y 3 when I have to integrate with respect to y 3. Then this will give me 1 by 3 into 2 f cube y 3 from minus infinity to y 4 which I can say 1 by 3 factorial f cube y 4. So, you can see this I can call 1 by 2 factorial. So, I am getting a pattern here. So, that means if I continue like this and go up to y r minus 1 then the final integral will give me 1 by r uh, the last one will give me f of y r. So, this will be r minus 1 and this will be r minus 1 factorial because when we are getting 4 then here term is 1 less then it is 3 then 1 term is less here. So, at the when we do up to r then I will get f of y r here and here it will be r minus 1 and r minus 1 factorial. So, that is one part here. So, I am getting n factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial f of y r to the power r minus 1. Now, let us look at the other terms here. The next terms will be coming small f of y n. So, small f of y n when I look at A small f of y n that will give me capital F of y n and the integral is now from y n minus 1 to infinity. The integral for y n is from y n minus 1 to infinity. So, this is y n minus 1 to infinity. Now, f of infinity is 1. So, it is becoming 1 minus f of y n minus 1. So, now at the next stage I will have 1 minus f of y n minus 1 multiplied by small f of y n minus 1. So, this if I integrate I will get 1 by 2 1 minus f of y n minus 1 is square with a minus sign. So, this is from minus infinity to now sorry not from minus infinity it is from now y n minus 2 to infinity. So, that is y n minus 2 to infinity. So, this is giving me see at infinity this is becoming 0. So, this will become 1 minus f of y n minus 2 whole square 1 by 2. So, now at the next stage I have 1 minus f y n minus 2 square f of y n minus 2 and when this will be integrated I will get 1 by 3 into 2 1 minus f of y n minus 2 cube with a minus sign and this will be from y n minus 3 to infinity. So, when I <coughs> put the value this will give me 1 by 3 factorial 1 minus f y n minus 3 cube. Like that I have to go up to y r term here. So, the last term will give me 1 by now, you see here if it is n minus 3 here I am getting 3 factorial. So, if it is 1 minus f of y r then the power will become n minus r and here it will become n minus r factorial. So, this will be the term which will be left out after integrating up to y r plus 1. So, let me substitute it here and I get here n minus r factorial. 1 minus f of y r to the power n minus r and I am left with the corresponding term f of y r here. So, we are able to derive the probability density function of the rth order statistics which we can also write in the form of beta function because this is gamma r gamma n minus r plus 1 and uh, this will become sum of that that is gamma of n minus see if you add this n minus r plus r minus 1 n minus 1. So, that is gamma of that. So, it is becoming basically beta of r n minus r plus 1. 
f of y r to the power r minus 1 1 minus f y r to the power n minus r f of y r minus infinity less than y r less than infinity. So, we are able to actually derive the <coughs> distribution of the rth order statistics. Now, this approach is very interesting because if I consider 2 here in place of 1, suppose I want for first and second or I want for second and fourth. That means, in general I want for rth and sth order statistics. Now, then this procedure that I have given it will be applicable there also, because then you will have to integrate up to r minus 1 suppose r is less than s. Then on the right hand side you have to integrate s plus 1 x s plus 2 up to x n and in between r and s you will have to integrate r plus 1 up to s minus 1. Now, I have already given you the procedure that what term will be coming because up to r if you are doing you will actually get this term that is 1 by r minus 1 factorial f of y r r minus 1. When you are doing up to s that is from s plus 1 onwards you will get n minus s factorial 1 minus f of y s n minus s. Now, when you look at the terms between y r and y s that is y r plus 1 and so on, then you are integrating in the range. So, that range will give you then simply r minus s minus 1 factorial that is uh, sorry not r minus s, I am taking s to be greater than r. So, it will be s minus r minus 1 factorial and the difference is coming here upper and lower limit in the these cases one limit was coming out to be 0, but in that case both the limits will be coming. So, you will get f of y s minus f of y r to the power s minus r minus 1. So, this procedure can be extended. So, let me mention that thing. The above procedure for determining the PDF of x r is equal to y r can be extended to find the PDF of say y r y s that is equal to x r x s. Let us take say r less than s. So, then this will give me f of y r y s that is equal to 1 by r minus 1 factorial sorry this will be n factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial and you will have n minus s factorial as I mentioned and in the middle terms you will have s minus r minus 1 factorial and uh, then you will have the f of y r to the power r minus 1 1 minus f of y s to the power n minus s, then you will have f of y s minus f of y r to the power s minus r minus 1 f of y r f of y s minus infinity less than y r less than y s less than You can also look at uh, say the distributions of 3, suppose I say r s t where r is less than s less than t. In that case you will have r minus 1, then you will have n minus t factorial, then you will have s minus r minus 1 factorial, then you will have t minus s minus 1 factorial and similar terms will come here also. So, this procedure that I have given, it is giving you an insight into the calculation for such things. So, uh, that is very useful and you will be able to actually obtain the distributions of various type of such quantities here. Uh, in particular, if we consider say uh, any k order statistics where k is less than n, then that can also be obtained. Only thing is you have to write down the ordering like if I say 
uh, m 1 m 2 m k where m 1 is less than m 2 less than m k. So, entire thing can be written in an logarithmic way that means, the first one will become f of say y m 1 to the power m 1 minus 1 then you will have f of m y m minus uh, m 2 minus f of y m 1 to the power m 2 minus m 1 minus 1 like that all the terms will come there. So, this is a very uh, useful method. Uh, I will be demonstrating you for example, you can find out the distribution of the median, the distribution of the range etcetera, uh, but in particular let us see if we take say uniform distribution then what do you get. Suppose, I take f to be the uniform distribution as a special case if we take f to be uniform 0 1 then you will get say f of y r that is simply 1 by beta r n minus r plus 1 and here you will get simply y r and here 1 minus y r. So, that is very interesting. this is nothing but which is a beta r n minus r plus 1 distribution. So, this is a known form. So, here it is very interesting here that if I consider the special case here then we are getting a beta distribution of in the uniform case. So, this form of course, it is used at uh, many places and this is also given as an independent derivation of uh, beta di distribution, although we have mentioned that beta distribution arises in various uh, practical applications, uh, but this is also given as one uh, application that means, in sampling from uniform 0 1 distribution, the distribution of the rth order statistics. is beta. So, this is very interesting result here. Uh, I will be uh, next talking about the uh, moments of the order statistics then uh, as you can easily see that since we are not assuming a functional form for capital F that means, we do not know exactly what form is there. There is difficulty in getting exact expressions. So, we will talk about that then we talk about the approximations then we talk about asymptotic expressions for the distribution of the order statistics. Using this we will define something called an empirical distribution function which will be used as an estimate of capital F and we will use the properties of that. So, in the following lectures we will be continuing this theory here.